when most folks think of Texas, they think of wide open spaces. But that's not where most Texans live. You got the chaos and the noise of the city. Yeah, the constant noise. Traffic. The traffic, of course. Congestion. Humongous mass of people. With all the construction and the everyday nine to five, it's a nice change of pace to come here. You can come and see the beauty of nature right in the middle of the city. Almost as long as people have lived in cities, they've enjoyed parkland and open space. Parks are places for city dwellers to escape the crush of city life. Places to meet for a stroll in the sunshine or a picnic under a tree. Or places to simply catch a glimpse of the natural world. About half the size of New York Central Park, Houston's Herman Park provides a similar natural oasis inside the urban core of the largest city in Texas. A place to escape the traffic and noise without having to leave town. Home to some of the city's favorite attractions, Herman Park has been popular since its beginning in 1914. Look at that. But like so many older urban parks, by the 1980s, Herman Park was in decline. It was underfunded, and parts of it were underutilized or used up. Sections were becoming unsafe. The park historically fell on hard times, and the whole urban forest area here on this side of the park was basically abandoned. Yet Herman Park was as necessary as ever as a place to unwind, a place for outdoor recreation, and as a vital hub for a diverse community. Living in a large city can be a very isolating experience. And research has shown that green spaces, urban green spaces, are more effective than any other type of space for bringing communities together. In a world of gated communities and increasingly private definitions of public space, Herman Park has remained common ground, freely accessible to all. It was too important to lose. Doreen Stoller, Friends of Herman Park. Enter the nonprofit Friends of Herman Park, a group of concerned citizens who joined with the city to raise money to restore the park. With help from corporate sponsors, foundations, and individual donors, Herman Park has undergone a multi-million dollar renovation. Today, it is more vibrant than ever, welcoming some five and a half million visitors per year. The expansion of Lake McGovern has created a developed area for recreation and natural features for wildlife. And a once neglected area of the park along Bray's Bayou has been transformed into an outdoor classroom. Community outreach is an important part of stewardship. We had over 20,000 school children come in just the last few years. On this spring day, with the help of Friends of Herman Park volunteers, hundreds of urban Houston families enjoyed a day exploring the wilder side of their local park. Kids come out and they search for insects and look in the ponds and they have a really good time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a little fish. <laughs> it's good that it's close and accessible. You find Our kids are usually from apartment communities. Um, they don't really get to go outside and experience trees and things like that. So having a park close to an urban setting is really, really important for our kids. So what kind of, what kind of plant is this? It looks like that one. A sunflower! Huh? It has lasting effects, definitely. You want to go put them in the glass? Yeah, yeah. I had a two for one, two for one. It was fun. The magical thing about a healthy park is that there truly is a sense of community where you will see a gathering of everybody from the community relaxing together, strolling together, enjoying the park together. The flip side of that is without community involvement, you will not have healthy parks. Perhaps the most encouraging thing about the renewed community interest in Herman Park is that it is not exactly unique. 
all governments are facing budget crises right now and unfortunately parks are one of the budget items that often gets cut the fastest. Many park systems including the state and national parks but also local parks are very dependent on volunteers and friends groups to to keep them afloat. All over the nation where urban parks have been in trouble their neighbors have rallied to help them. In fact, just across Houston, on the city's industrial northeastern edge, an especially urban state park is also being renewed. Sheldon Lake has a mission that's a unique mission because it's in a unique setting, and it's only about 15 miles as the crow flies from downtown Houston. And because it's a fairly significant amount of habitat in an urban setting, it has a lot of wildlife here and a diverse amount of wildlife. Sheldon Lake State Park and Environmental Learning Center has evolved from a surplus wildlife management area to a 2,800-acre outdoor education and recreation facility. There were two small alligators. They like to and that evolution on is ongoing. <laughs> Last year, we were over 5,000 children and uh, 2,000 or more adults, and uh, we hope to gradually increase that as our facilities are expanded and. Uh, hopefully expand our volunteer club. Plans include renovation and new construction to enhance access to hands-on education using the ponds and wetlands as a giant natural classroom. Uh, we have a cast net and you have dip nets. Once expanded, Sheldon will provide some of the best opportunities in the state for urban and suburban youth to learn about nature and the outdoors. They learn from hands-on. It's the hands-on experience out in nature. You can't explain it. They have to see it and do it. Good throw. And that's what they remember and how they learn. Guess I'll give time. I'll try. While these high no school insects. aquatic science students right. can use the park as a field laboratory, Ooh, look at that big tadpole. younger students may just benefit yeah, from a positive outdoor experience. Okay. Another good cast. Another good Most cast. of the kids haven't seen wild animals. I had a child saw a cardinal the other day and they called it a red macaw. To them it was a red macaw because they know more about rainforests from school than they know about their own city and the, the birds and animals that live here. Oh. Oh, Pull that rock straight up in the air so everyone can see it. Look at that. <laughs> There's nothing more profound than picking up a tadpole or an animal and seeing it and it helps them relate it to what they're they're doing back in the classroom. You want to touch him? Look, he's pretty. He's pretty. They just read it for me. I have had students that once they were on one of the field trips and exposed actually decided on a major in college that related to that or uh, they did start doing volunteer work at one of the parks that we did the work at. You guys ready? For many, the futures of urban parks and urban kids seem inextricably linked. <laughs> Certainly the futures of both are brighter when they have caring neighbors looking out for them. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. While urban parks need the support of their communities to stay healthy, in return, they offer opportunities for outdoor learning and fun, and some memories that just may last a lifetime. On your mark, get set. It impacts some of them immediately. Others will come back later, but they eventually do still come back to that field trip. That is a big turning point for them. For more information about visiting or supporting Sheldon Lake State Park and Environmental Learning Center, contact the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Or to support the Friends of Herman Park, visit their website or pay them a visit at the park.